Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another Super Tease video, and it is coming down to the finale of Dragonflight Season 3 PvP. This is typically where the highest level of gameplay is going to be happening. It's personally one of my favorite times to compete in the game and try and pursue some of these limited edition end of season rewards, but it is also a time for the rats to come scurrying out of their holes, the cheaters and the wind traders who seemingly think that pixels in World of Warcraft PvP people care about and they're worth cheating for in order to get uh, and completely invalidating any sort of sense of fulfillment and accomplishment in the actual process of getting them and in today's video we're just going to be exposed exposing it as it is causing me to lose a lot of respect in quite a few members of the community that I really thought would be you know above doing this type of stuff but I've been scrolling through Twitter and I've noticed this increasing trend of players encountering this with Infernion posting a video of players basically admitting that they are doing it with their win training I will have this linked in the description down below having some players showing teams that are queuing at peculiar hours of the day and getting really high win rates in small spans of time that are not naturally, you know, possible in order to achieve tweets from other pro players of players intentionally, you know, not using cooldowns and basically match rigging and trying to create distress. I've seen other players, you know, you know, not so much as you know, win trading, but healers who leave lobbies when certain DPS are down on points in order to assist their friends. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing you my personal experience with it as well. So in today's video, uh, we, we joined a solo shuffle lobby. I really wanted to cover some, some alpha content, but as I was streaming and starting to push up rating, we had this encounter basically. Um, we joined a solo shuffle we had a brew up we had myself we had this no guard fan druid and i really want you to pay attention to the resto druid in particular with this match rigging this is at the highest level of the ladder i was at 20 2800 rating looking close to push to the top um you guys obviously should use your own uh, you know judgment here if you want to be making you know the jury of this situation but at the start of this game we're playing a wizard cleave we're going to do our best to just max out damage and try and limit the rep paladins uptime and trade appropriately with their defensive cooldowns and this game is important in order to identify the starking difference between the gameplay of a round like this where no guard and a brew are playing together so at the position of this game our resto druid is at the pillar they're playing defensively here you can see them with the purple diamond pay attention to their positioning pay attention to their cooldowns here off to the left as they trade with the opposing team now we're getting aggressive this game honestly was one of the best games i've ever played in solo shovel this is the type of quality of game that i was expecting um playing towards the end of the season with both teams trading cooldowns playing really well uh, in terms of positioning and pressure and output, it gets really insane towards the later stage of it, but we really need the entire game to cover exactly what goes down with this. So our Resto Druid is in a stun here, and they've used Bark Skin. Now, this is very typical, as teams will swap to you as a Resto Druid as a Rep Paladin, and you generally have to respect it anytime they have Avenging Wrath up. This is the type of gameplay you expect to see from healers that are absolutely at the pinnacle of their gameplay and not deliberately match-fixing or match-rigging. So we get Bash on the healer, I double coil so it's covered with no dispel we knock them back we double stun them we're we're having a really insane game considering no voice absolutely having a great time we're going to portal and reposition and get away from the pillar this way we're no longer stacked on top of the rep paladin notice our resto druid repositions and runs very far away from the opposing team which is the reaction you want to have against paladins to avoid their hammer of justice now we're going to kite to the opposite side of the map and continue to avoid the enemy healer you can see we're rotating very long lines kiting playing defensive as you should with double caster as a resto druid trying to pull the rep paladin into bad positions as we're trying to pull them the corner we bash them we continue loading up our dots we knock them away we're playing a very solid game of defense again as you would expect to see at this rating things get very scary towards the end of this game though as we start moving forward but that intensity was still one of the main reasons this was a really fun round you know so their rep paladin has to bubble our druid hits 10 percent we double coil we make this hero coil right when he's about to die on the dps into a fear we're feeling legendary we're fearing the dispel we're taking him out of the game and we managed to recover we've used our tranquility 
and our trinket and our bark skin. Every single ability has been used up to this point. We portal away from the swap to ourselves, try and get some distance, as again, we're still in a lot of trouble. We're pumping out damage towards the Warlock. Things are coming down to the wire in this lobby. This is the type of gameplay that I was really looking for on the final day. We clutch it out with a close kill on the Demonology Warlock. But now, this is where we come into the match rigging portion of the game, and I'll let you decide, right? Now, with that game having played out, it was about a three minute round. Every cooldown is used, our positioning is good, we're repositioning across the map and playing defensive. Now, th this, this play that happens in this game is going to be the antithesis of that, basically. And I don't know why somebody would do this like so blatantly and deliberately. So the first thing this Resto Druid is going to do now is run into the middle of the map and right on top of the Rep Paladin and tank all of their cooldowns without doing anything. Like, if you're going to do this, man, I would expect it to be more subtle, but he runs right into the middle of the map right here. We can see him. He gets stunned. You can see him right here with the diamond. In the middle of the map, he gets stunned. The enemy team is all on top of him. This is completely different. You don't... This is not... This is not typical. This is like... So I'm trying to protect him. You know, I locked the Cyclone. I'm thinking, what's going on here? Like, he didn't run in stealth to try and bash clone the healer. He ran in out of stealth into the middle of the map. This is another thing to note. And doesn't use any cooldowns when he's stunned in the middle of the map running in out of stealth. So even despite the other Warlock stunning, me fearing, and we're doing our best to protect this, it's going to be pretty hard, right? So he hits about 10%, and I think probably realized, you know, this probably looks too much like wind trading. Decides to press Iron Bark and heal himself to full. So he presses Iron Bark and uses the rest of his cooldowns to heal himself to full, but then continues to continue walking forward on top of the enemy team without moving. So I'm only imagining, and now he's cycloned. Do note at this time, the Red Paladin is feared. They're in a cyclone. Nobody is taking damage, okay? Nobody is taking damage. They use their trinket. So now they don't have a trinket in a situation where they're putting themselves in the middle of the map taking a lot of damage. They've deliberately trinketed something that is completely unnecessary at a time that is completely unneeded despite such an amazingly flawless game number one play. And they continue to stand, look at the diamond, in the middle of the map on top of the opposing team. They continue to stand right in the middle of the map, out in the open, for the other team to basically do whatever they want to them. So they're gonna do that. Like, hey, this is the last day of the season. I really need to get these wins. So they're gonna, you know, obviously take advantage of this and try and get as many wins as they can. Hammer of Justice. Now, so again, when you're stunned by a Rep Paladin, what did we see in the first round? Bark Skin. Now we're standing in the middle of the map deliberately on top of them, intentionally win trading. And we're gonna get stunned and we're not gonna use Bark Skin. We're just gonna stand here. We're not gonna use defensive cooldowns. And somehow we're keeping this guy alive, even despite these like, half-hearted attempts at win trading this other warlock convoy and myself are somehow keeping this guy alive so he survives that attempt with those two stunts but continues to just stand in the middle of the map without using any cooldowns without going into bear form and then dying so again you guys let me know in the comments down below in terms of this t but i think this is obvious match fixing i think this is obvious win trading uh, but i do want to know your thoughts as well even despite this cheating we're still going to rise above it we're still going to send it on my stream so if you'd like to support me uh, i'll have that linked in the description down below but other than that, I just wanted to expose this, look at this situation, because I think it is becoming a lot more widespread than I really anticipated. And I'm surprised at how many people seem to care about pixels in the game and cheating for these pixels in the game that nobody else cares about. This is supposed to be like a personal self-accomplishment moment with, with epic gameplay, not this kind of like, yo, my God, I, I win traded and paid money and boosted and got this thing that doesn't matter. It, like you, you're removing the meaning in it by doing that to it in the process. And I don't understand why people don't realize that, why they want to risk their accounts, why they want to, you know, to try and do this for something that they are, strip, they are stripping the meaning out of. So other than that, thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you next time.